Hey guys, how you doing? Phantomic here, and today, um, Tin Man basically mentioned it to me, saying uh, I've had the SV now for coming up to two years now, and yet I still haven't given my review on what I actually think of the bike, um, upsides, downsides, things like that. So I thought I'd finally get to doing one. Um, ignore the bike dirtiness at the moment I've just been out on a ride with it even though I just cleaned it and I decided to take the mountain roads and uh, yeah she got dirty pretty quickly so basically I just thought I'd give a walk around um, then we can jump on the bike and uh, yeah I'll give you my opinion so I'll catch you on the road now so the few mods I've performed on this bike is replace the indicators, two RNG LEDs, tail tidy, crash bungs, heat grips, Chinese shorty levers on clutch and brake, which is a bit hard to see because of the throttle lock at the moment. Added a RAM mount for my phone, because that comes in handy. Um, backup cigarette charger which isn't hooked up to the battery at the moment it's in case of emergency and I need it um, GoPro mount tinted windshield upgraded side lights to LEDs uh, front extender uh, a hugger and that's about it okay guys now you cast me on the road just leaving the park where I did the walk around just to show you what the bike looks like and as you can see from there I've got the SV650S it's a 2009 uh, registered in 2010 so a late late registration model first off is a V-twin you know I'm assuming if you're looking at an SV you roughly know that um, the biggest advantage I found with the SV is as I am on A2 license, this bike is restrictable for an A2, which makes it very useful for people looking for a bike that has, in my opinion, plenty of power, even at a restricted level. Because it's a V-twin, and it's a very torquey machine, the pulling power on you is great. If it does have this much pulling power and it being restricted and if it is being held back by the restriction which I can't see that being the case but even if it is um, it just means you get more pulling power and there's like I said there's nothing wrong with that because the power the way this bike just delivers the power is so smooth and responsive like you don't have to get it up in the high rev range to basically go anywhere you know which for me is, is perfect for them commuting style like so yeah this bike just gives you complete control over the power it's very smooth it delivers well it pulls like crazy I mean that really didn't take long to get up to speed and that was a max gear and I only hit six and a half thousand revs so it pulls it really really pulls and that was one of the factors I liked I wanted a bike that was sporty looking but had power delivery that I can use so I was looking at Thundercats um, ER6Fs which is what motor joshing rides um, I was also looking at the Kawasaki GPZ500, one of the older ones, um, because basically the restriction on that was barely anything. You basically had an entire bike worth of power. So in the end I decided on a friend's recommendation that the SV650 was the right choice because of just basically because of the V-twin and it matched the style I wanted. So. To me, that that was the winning, the winning choice over there. Um, 
what doesn't hurt though is with a v-twin if you get a nice third-party exhaust you're talking about a very badass sounding bike and later this year this bike will be getting a third-party exhaust Ooh, that's nice so yeah badass sound great power delivery great amount of pulling power restrictable and sporty looking completely fell into all the categories that I was looking at for a bike and the bonus to that then was it being technically not a sport bike but being a commuter bike refaired to look like a sport bike meant the insurance was a lot cheaper I mean I was looking again like a, a 250 at first because it was what like 900 pound to insure on a 250 fully calm and my first year on this bike uh, was 620 so insurance was a lot cheaper I got a lot more power I got a better looking bike in my opinion so I didn't really see any uh, downsides to the bike it is light you know you point this baby and it's going there um, it's great it's very flickable you know it feels great um, I'll be honest I'm not a rider that has ever got his knee down um, not really planning on it either so but apparently I've got close so and that's without trying so that just goes to show the the confidence in this bike and leaning it over and just the comfortability you know just being comfortable with the bike is definitely there so i love how light and flickable this thing is it doesn't feel like a big bike now it has very decent braking power now a lot of people complain about the sv braking but i've never been one really to complain about it i think it's got plenty of uh braking power um i've had to perform a you know a couple of emergency stops in my time with people pulling out on me not many luckily but i've never i've never really been that close to it going wrong this bike really does have braking power you find a lot of people, in my opinion, that complain about the braking power on this or either looking at a bike that they can get onto the front wheel and perform mini stunts, which really isn't advisable with an SV. Definitely not a uh, stunt bike. Um, you basically starve the engine by performing wheelies on these if you do them excessively. You can get upgraded brakes, right? But in my opinion, if you really want just better brakes, I think just changing the pads and upgrading to braided hoses, you know, braided hose lines, will change the bike dramatically. So I think it'll change it enough that you would get a lot more um, response out of it and feel from it. That I think that would be more usable. And it'd be a lot cheaper to do than trying to do an entire brake caliber swap. The one thing for me that lacks on this bike and I'm running just one notch away from max rear suspension is literally the suspension it's it's not great and I am torn at the moment I plan I, I'm hoping to upgrade it I really am I'm hoping to uh, change the rear shock and change the front forks uh, springs and oils and everything this year but I'm still debating it if it's cost effective because it's a budget bike it is a budget bike um, you don't get the best suspension and I'm going to filter through do, 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 do. come on you if you were willing to do the work yourself you could basically upgrade the entire suspension on this bike for about and as basically a whole new um, rear shock designed for this bike OEM style with progressive you know with progressive load instead and uh, new forks oils and everything like that if you're willing to do the work yourself you can get it done for about 
360 and you're looking at closer to 500 with labor costs it's a great fantastic bike if you're looking at something with torque cheap insurance sporty looking and a bike that basically carries pillions really well because of that torque it carries pillions amazingly i've had my wife on the back i've had my brother on the back I've had mates on the back and I've never been in a situation where the bike just didn't have enough power to get us out of junctions or filtering and things like that you know I filtered with the wife on the back all the way down on the motorway from Swansea you know the bike the, this bike can do it it's fantastic and I highly recommend the bike but um, yeah I think that does it all um, if there's anything I've missed out or anything else you want to know just uh leave it in the comments below and uh i'll let you know if i can answer the questions or i will find the answers if possible but other than that i hope you liked the video if you can if you have enjoyed the video please hit that uh, thumbs up and if you don't mind subscribing i would really appreciate it for uh, more videos from myself but yeah i'll catch you in the next one and this one's been fun